Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Exciting times in the photographic world, in the video world, in the equipment world, cameras and whatnot. We have, we just discussed the Fuji X-H1. Very excited about that camera. But Panasonic, never asleep at the wheel. We've got a brand new GX9. I loved the GX8. I had it here for quite a while. Fantastic little camera. I always liked the GX series from Panasonic. And we have a new GX9. I was just reading, uh, looking through the press release and whatnot. Um, basically, the GX9 um, takes the tech of the newest stuff, the GH5S, the GH5, uh, and builds on the great GX8 at a lower price. So we're getting that 20.3 megapixel sensor for less money. Um, it's a newish body, um, compact camera, physical dials, um, brings a bigger sensor with a tiltable electronic viewfinder. That's probably the one negative here is we're losing our flip out. So if you're a vlogger or you're into selfies, we've lost that. That's, that's the one thing I don't like. I'm filming right now with the G85 and I've got that flip out and I like that and I don't like to see us losing that on the GX9. But we've got like um, nine things here that I think are a good upgrade to the GX9 that may be a reason you want to buy the GX9 as your first Panasonic camera as an addition to the ones you have as an upgrade to your GX8 um, you know first and form foremost is that 20.3 megapixel live MOS sensor with the latest Venus processing engine uh, and then I guess um, second to that is the lack of the GX8's low pass filter so we're getting a sharper just like the GT5 has no low, low pass filter more detail sharper images out of a, out of the same or better megapixels. So all else being equal, you remove that low pass filter, you're getting a better image. You know, number three, uh, we've got um, the amazing defocus, autofocus system, depth from defocus, autofocus, um, focus in 0 0.07 seconds. This is a very good system. If you haven't played with the Panasonic cameras for autofocus, they're fast, accurate. Um, they're, they're really a joy to work with. Um, the other thing, I guess number three, um, or is that four, the camera now is an electromagnetic rather than a mechanical shutter, and it re reduces the vibrations. They're saying by up to 90%. So that, that's a very welcome thing, you know. Um, that was some of the complaints with the GX8. I never really experienced it. I loved the little GX8. Um, I really had no complaints with it. Some people did have a complaint with that, with the mechanical shutter and some vibration. That's gone now. We got electromagnetic shutter, so you shouldn't have that complaint. So that's number three. Um, number four, you're getting five-axis in-body image stabilization, IBIS. That's in comparison to the four axis that was on the GX8. Again, a very welcome addition, a welcome boost in technology. Uh, and again, I'm going to point out here at a lower price. Uh, and number five, um, it has a built-in flash. You know, to some people, a lot of people say, well, if you're using a pro camera, you shouldn't have a flash. But you know what? I never mind having a flash because in a pinch, you can bounce a built-in flash. You can just it, you can do a lot of things with it that you can't do if you don't have it. And you know, it can it can fire a light triggered remote. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. I find them handy. I like having it. So to me, that's a welcome addition. That's number five on my list. Um, number six uh, is not a new thing, but we have the Ultra HD 4K video still, 30p and 24p. We got 60 frames per second at, at uh, 1080 uh, with full-time AF and also the 4K photo. I'm not... Uh, I guess we throw that in as, as number seven, 4K photo options, because it's actually pretty cool to see what you can do with the 4K photo. It allows you to very easily pull 8 megapixel stills uh, from the video. And, and if you haven't played with that, it's a really powerful option. It's a really great thing about 4K. So that'd be 6 and 7. Uh, 8 is kind of cool. They've introduced an L monochrome D mode, uh, and they're saying it will yield black and white images with better dynamic range and more control of grain or noise. So I love to shoot black and white. For those of you that are like me and like to shoot black and white, I think you're going to – I'm really curious to get my hands on this and try this and see how good this black and white is because I love black and white. Um, actually, I've got a new Instagram. It's uh, mattballard.co because that's my new website. The site's not even up yet, but mattballard.co. So if you want to check it out, I've done this as, a, as you'll know if I had the existing Instagram is out of the image. But I wanted this one just to be just my art stuff. I don't want to be talking about gear or anything in it. I just want it to be my, you know, me out shooting for the art of it, for the fun of it. And so that's what you'll see on there. Just all shots that I thought were cool, artistic, whatnot. Check it out. It's new, but it's growing. And I'd be happy to have you uh, follow it. Would appreciate that.
comment, share, whatever. Just wanted to share it with you guys. Okay, so that's number eight. And then number nine is is the price, the value on this thing. They brought the price down. So it's going to be uh, available in mid-March in black or silver with a kit lens, the 12 to 60. That's a 3.5 to 5.6 variable aperture kit lens. However, it's a great little lens. You know, that's, that's an equivalent 24 to 120. So it's kind of like having the Nikon, my favorite Nikon F4 VR on there, which I have on the D850 for testing right now. Uh, for a thousand bucks, one thousand dollars, and they're saying that's a good two hundred dollars less than what the GX8 was with body only. So they've really reduced the price here, and the only negative I can see is the is is we've lost the full very angle LCD. But right now I'm shooting this video with the G85 and running it off the iPad, which is right here, so I can control things. And I guess I point that out because if you're using your phone or an iPad or a device, um, kind of makes up for in quite a lot of ways not having that swivel LCD. I like to have it, but being able, like Panasonic has one of the best implementations of an app and the control of it on the app. And it really makes up for it in a lot of ways. So this, I think, is going to be a great offering from Panasonic. I think it's going to be a good seller. And I'm very excited to get one in, to get my hands on it and play with it. So if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I'll see if I can get an answer to it. Um, what do you guys think? Are you excited about this? Um, are these nine points of interest to you? If I missed something that is of interest to you on the GX9, is something I pointed out you don't think's noteworthy. What what are you thinking? Are you going to buy one? Is it going to cause you to upgrade? Are you finally coming into the Micro Four Thirds system because of the GX9? Let's discuss it. Always great to hear back from you guys. Want to hear what you guys are thinking. Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.